Neil Warnock once famously claimed that one must die to receive three points, so today Chris and I are going to be putting that to the test. We'll be using this novel AI website to pit all 20 Premier League managers against one another in a series of brutal death matches, starting with the group stages and finishing with an epic 1v1 battle between the two finalists. So unfortunately we don't have Thierry Henry picking balls out of a giant glass bowl for the group stage pickings, instead you've just got me and Chris and a free online randomizer. So the group stages will be... Oh, oh my god! God, that group one is an absolute group of death. It's the most appropriately named group of death ever. So out of all of these, it's going to be kind of classic group say shenanigans. So two managers will survive, two managers will die in every single group. So 10 will make it through to the next round. Shall we get down to business? Don't say it like that, but yes. Jurgen Klopp, Mikel Arteta, Unai Emery and Eric Ten Hag enter the arena. Armed only with passion, determination and their bare hands, they have vowed to kill one another in a death match that only ends when two of the managers have died. They each lock eyes with one another. The bloodlust is palpable. Two will die, two will survive. The battle is long and epic and goes as follows. Why is the bloodlust palpable? Jurgen, I'm- wait, what? what no, <laughs> no, that's not- Where's the bloodlust? <laughs> Klopp, what? <laughs> Sense. His fighting talk really needs some work. In an early swing, Arteta is knocked down and injured by a flying <laughs> kick from Klopp, who immediately takes advantage and begins using <laughs> <laughs> on his Tenark, seeing a chance, sneaks up behind him and shoves a knife into his back, causing him to drop Arteta and scream in agony. Ten Hag attempts to finish the job, but is tackled out of the ring by Klopp, leaving Arteta to crawl away. Emery and Klopp get into a fist fight, with the latter gaining the upper hand as Emery fights this hero, knocking him down and beginning a frenzied attack. There's so much action going on already. Ten Hag's managed to pull a knife out of his arse. This is supposed to be a bare knuckle fight. Oh, with passion, determination, and a three-inch machete. I think this might be violent conduct, Eric. <laughs> PG Mole can issue an apology after the fight, I'm sure. Meanwhile, Ten Hag has climbed onto the lighting ring and is trying to dislodge it. When Arteta sees what he's doing, he rushes across the ring and grabs him by the ankle, causing him to lose balance and fall back to the mat below. <laughs> the impact is fatal, and Arteta stands triumphant, though still badly hurt. So Ten Hag is just immediately dead. It's a very underwhelming death, <laughs> I have to say. He's just been killed by fall damage. Falling onto the mat instead of just down the table this time. <laughs> Emery is about to land the final blow on Klopp, who has lost consciousness, when Arteta grabs him by the arm. Don't do it, Unai! I beg of you, he says, blood trickling from his mouth. Emery, shocked, drops his weapon and walks away. Arteta stands there, staring down at the beaten and bloody body of Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> Emery returns and puts no. his arm around Arteta. We should probably leave, my friend, he says. Arteta nods and the two of them make their way out of the arena, leaving Klopp lying there. No, how, what have you not understood? That's a death match that only ends when two of the managers have died. <laughs> and then Arteta <laughs> swings for Emery, hitting him hard enough to knock him out. He then picks up his unconscious body and throws him through the ring ropes into the crowd. A stunned Arteta climbs the turnbuckle, the audience charting his name, and holds his arms aloft. He has won the Battle Royale, and that will be the new manager of Arsenal Football Club. Alright, things have gone off the rails, but then Emery and Klopp rise to their feet, ready to enter the fray once again. <laughs> what? <laughs> no! Yes. I'm really looking forward to Arteta starting a fight with the Ultras in the crowd. If Arteta gets killed by the crowd, then Arteta gets killed by the crowd. Klopp and Emery take this as their opportunity to escape, fleeing out of the stadium. Arteta tries to fight off the angry mob, but it's too late. They begin pummeling him, and he has no choice but to fight back. Right, Klopp and Emery are not getting away that easily. They're, they're coming back into this. So Klopp and Emery return, knowing that one must die. Arteta and Emery fight valiantly, but are soon overcome. Arteta is kicked into a coma, and Emery is choked to death by Klopp, <laughs> who stands there, breathing heavily, a satisfied grin on his face. Oh my god, even the AI's got the Klopp gurn in there. Klopp has murdered Emery, so that means that Ten Hag and Emery are out. Now, Arteta and Klopp may have survived this battle, but a coma and a severed ear won't be the only things they'll have to deal with in the aftermath. An ordeal like that will surely have left them with mental scars to match the physical ones. And it's now up to them to find a way of dealing with these in a healthy manner. And what better way to do that than through the use of today's advert, BetterHelp. Now, I know that was a bit of a jokey transition into a pretty serious subject, but I personally find it more comfortable to talk about mental health in a light-hearted manner, as it kind of makes it seem a bit less daunting. That being said, I know that different approaches work for different people, and that's what BetterHelp is all about. Whether you have a clinical condition, 
things such as depression or anxiety, or you just happen to be going through a particularly rough patch. BetterHelp is a platform that's dedicated to making finding a therapist as easy and accessible as possible. And with over a thousand credentialed therapists readily available, you'll be able to find someone that meets your specific needs. Now, I personally haven't had therapy before, but having spoken to friends and family that have, I know how hard it can be to get started. With BetterHelp, everything is designed to make you feel as comfortable as possible. You can have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even just via messaging. And you can schedule sessions for whenever's most convenient for you, all from the comfort of your own home. Adverse mental health can seriously interfere with your ability to find happiness and achieve your own life goals. But so far, over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living healthier, happier lives. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs. And then you'll get matched with your therapist, in most cases within 48 hours or less. It can be common with therapy to find yourself matched with someone who doesn't feel like the right fit, especially if you're new to the process and it's your first time. But as I said before, BetterHelp is all about finding the right person and approach for you. So you can easily switch to a new therapist with no additional cost. If you think you might benefit from therapy, please consider BetterHelp by clicking the link in the description or visiting betterhelp.com forward slash Ollie. Clicking that link helps to support my channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a the therapist and see if it helps you. So Ten Hag and Emery are dead, Klopp and Arteta are through to the next round. On to Group B. Death. Destruction, violence. These are the only things in Rob Edwards, Pep Guardiola, Ange Postacoglu, and Thomas Frank's minds as they square up to one another, a feral hunger in each man's eye. The tension is palpable as the four fighters stand opposite each other, each eager to begin the massacre. Only two men can survive the oncoming bloodshed, and armed only with their bare hands, they fight. <laughs> Guardiola, the veteran of these wars, has been here many times before. His first instinct is to go for the jugular, to take out the opposition quickly and then move on. But his opponents have the measure of him, and Edwards quickly grabs it in a chokehold. Restricting his breathing, Edwards tightens his grip until Postecoglou forces the pair apart and smashes Edwards to the ground with a thunderous body blow. The Welshman scrambles to his feet, but Guardiola is on him like a rash, delivering a flurry of blows. Edwards tries to block them, but is overpowered by the Spanish fighter. Postacoglu intervenes again and the fight is stopped while Edwards recovers. As the referee resets the men, Edwards sees his chance and dives in, grabbing the neck of Postacoglu. Hold on, the Bulgarian? <laughs> Who's Bulgarian here? I think he's talking about Postacoglu, isn't he? He's had a passport change. Allow it. The Bulgarian struggles for a few moments before falling defeated to the ground. It's down to Guardiola and Edwards. They circle each other. Wait, what? What happened to the other two? Are they, what did they just... to Thomas uh -oh. Frank? Thomas Frank is nowhere to be seen. We'll go with it, otherwise we're just going to bring Thomas Frank back in manually. It's down to Guardiola and Edwards. They circle one another, each man wary, both aware of the danger they pose. Suddenly, Guardiola pounces, but Edwards sidesteps the attack and strikes back, knocking his opponent to the floor. He pins him there, trying to choke the life out of him, but the Catalan is resilient. He forces Edwards off him and the two fighters rise again. Edwards is clearly the more physical of the two men, but Guardiola's guile is not to be underestimated. Edwards goes for another strike, but the Catalan avoids the punch and responds in kind, his fist catching Edwards right in the side of the head. Right, well, we've decided to get things back on track. Postacoglu and Thomas Frank are getting involved. And then Postacoglu rises like a phoenix and charges back into the melee, with Thomas Frank snapping at his heels. Two of them are going to die soon. And after a brutal battle, Edwards and Guardiola lie in a pool of their own blood. The life oh force is draining away as the earth. What? That's a victorious Postacoglu and Frank bask in the glory. <laughs> okay, I didn't want them to die that soon. Are we going with that? I think we have to. You, you can't argue against the AI. I guess that's that. Edwards and Guardiola are out. Postacoglu and Frank have made it to the quarterfinals. Paul Heckingbottom, Eddie Howe, Sean Dyche and Steve Cooper size one another up, knowing that only two of them will be leaving the arena alive. The four men hate one another with every fibre of their beings and will not stop until two of the men have been killed. Armed with just their bare hands, the four men charge at one another and the carnage begins. <laughs> <laughs> We're straight in here with Paul Hecking Bottom and his <laughs> wife. No. Paul, leave your personal issues at the doorstep. I'm gonna kill you, Dyche. I've had enough of you. Paul Hecking <laughs> Paul Hecking Bottom screamed as he charged at his greatest rival, Eddie Howe. <laughs> Bless him, the moment's got to him. The two were once friends, but now they were sworn enemies and were more than ready to destroy each other. Eddie dodged Paul's attack and kicked him in the stomach. I've always hated you, Hecky. Why are they using pet names in combat? Always have and always will. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Paul got up and threw a punch, but then he blocked it and hit him in the face. He then tackled him, and they both tumbled onto the floor. <laughs> and started furiously making out. The two <laughs> rolled around, fighting on the ground, until Sean and Dyche ran over to them. Oh, hell. You two can fight all you want later, <laughs> but first, we need to take out the biggest threat to us here. Yeah. 
the Welsh guy Paul said, why is there racism? Come on guys. <laughs> exactly. The Welsh guy, Sean replied, come on, let's go find him. <laughs> why is he becoming an orc? Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. The three men stood up and scanned the area, looking for Steve Cooper. They soon spotted him in the distance and started walking towards him. He looks tough, Paul said. Well, we're tougher. Come on, let's get him. The three men raced over to Steve and attacked him. Paul threw a punch. Eddie kicked him and Sean grabbed him from behind. Steve fought back, throwing punches and kicks of his own. But the three men were too strong for him and he was soon overwhelmed. Oh, this isn't sounding good. You're a strong man, Cooper, but we're stronger. We're gonna kill you. Sean screamed, sizing his grip on Steve. Steve struggled, but he he couldn't break free. I can see it in your eyes, Cooper. You're afraid. You're afraid that we're gonna kill you. And you're right. We are. But not yet. <laughs> not until we've had some fun with you. Oh no, where's this going? <laughs> so, tell me, Cooper. How do you want to die? <laughs> Quick and easy? Or slow and painful? <laughs> Steve didn't answer. He just glared at the men. Sean chuckled. I'm gonna take that as a quick and easy. Alright then. Let's get this over with. The three men continued to fight Steve until he finally collapsed, exhausted and beaten. Now, who's next. I am. Paul yelled, lunging at Eddie. The two men engaged in a brutal fist fight, exchanging blow after blow. Paul had the advantage, however, and was soon able to gain the upper hand. He knocked Eddie to the ground and stood over him. Now it's time for you to die, Hal. Eddie stared up at Paul, his face bloody and bruised. Go ahead, heck, stop calling him hecky. Kill me. It's what you've always wanted. Paul smirked. Oh, I'm gonna kill you, all right, but not yet. Why? We know this isn't gonna go anywhere. Oh, don't start me off if you're not gonna finish it. First I'm gonna make you suffer. I'm gonna make you hurt like you've never hurt before. I'm gonna make you scream and cry and beg for mercy. Sounds hot. <laughs> and then, and only then, will I end your pathetic life. <laughs> Pulled out a knife and oh. raised it above his head. <laughs> this what? is gonna be fun. Sean watched as Paul slowly <laughs> began to stab Eddie, repeatedly plunging the knife into his chest and stomach. No, Eddie whimpered. Please. Yes. Now beg me to stop. Beg me for mercy, you worthless <laughs> piece of shit. Eddie gasped for breath, his body racked. <laughs> with pain. This is so sadistic. But please, stop. <laughs> Paul smiled. No. He continued to stab Eddie, the blood spilling out of his wounds and falling on the floor. Sean looked on in horror, unable to believe what he was seeing. Finally, Paul stood up, leaving Eddie's lifeless body lying in a pool of blood. That was satisfying. Now, who's next? Sean knew it was his turn to die and he was ready what? for it. Is he not going to fight oh, back? Me, I'm next. And you're going to regret it, hecky? Sean lunged at Paul determined to avenge Eddie's death. The two men fought fiercely, but Sean was no match for Paul's strength and experience. My god, Hecky is absolutely tearing it up. Soon Sean was on the ground, barely clinging to life. Just kill me, he rasped. Paul smirked. Sure thing, Dyche. He pulled out his knife and stabbed Sean finishing him off. Wait, but that means that Steve Cooper's through by being passed out. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I'm fine with that. He did get 3v1 at the start and <laughs> survived somehow, so to be fair, I think we should give Steve Cooper the benefit of the doubt here. I can't believe Deitch has gone out in the group stages, that's mental. So Steve Cooper and Paul Heckingbottom are through to the next round. On to Group D. Vincent Company, David Moyes, Andoni Iraola, and Maurizio Pochettino stare at one another, fists clenched, ready to wreak havoc upon their rivals. The four men want nothing more than the utter destruction of one another, and will kill each other by any means necessary. Armed with nothing but their bare hands, the massacre begins. Moyes and Company are on top of each other first, both men trying to pin their opposition's shoulders down, but they're quickly pulled apart. I'm going to fucking kill you, Moyes, Company snarls as he's being held back, his words dripping with venom and malice. Not before I tear your fucking head off, Moyes! Moyes shoots back, his own anger growing by the second. David. Meanwhile, Iraola and Pochettino have their own battle going on. Pochettino tries to put Iraola in a headlock, but the Spaniard wriggles free and grabs Pochettino from behind. Pochettino spins around, his knee colliding with Iraola's face. Iraola stumbles backwards, clutching his bleeding nose, and Pochettino pounces on him, punching him in the chest. Finally, after what seems an eternity, the violence comes to an end. All four men are exhausted, their bodies battered. Bruce, let's get the hell out of here, Moyes says, breathing heavily. No, no, no. We're done when I say we're done. You're a disgrace, Pochettino, Moist Spitz, <laughs> landing a solid blow to the Spaniard's chin. Okay, he's Argentinian, but whatever. And you're a washed up has been, Moist. Pochettino replies, striking Moist in the ribs. Eventually, the violence reaches a boiling point, and all four men are locked in a tangled, bloody mess of limbs and aggression. Yes, limbs. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Moist. Moist growls, wait, what? 
Hold on. <laughs> He's had a few too many hits to the head. Not if I kill you first, voice shoots back. Fuck you, company. Pochettino seethes. Fuck you too, Pochettino, company replies. This has gone on long enough. We're gonna go to penalties. The violence intensifies, and the two men who die oh, are company shit. and Iraola. As the two bodies hit the floor, Moyes and Pochettino both stand there, staring at each other. The tension between the two men is palpable, and it's clear there's no love lost between them. But that's all there is for this group stage. On to the final group stage, and things are really hotting up. Roy Hodgson, Roberto De Zerbi, Gary O'Neill and Marco Silva cautiously watch one another, knowing that only two of them will be leaving the oncoming slaughter alive. Anger and malice engulf each man. They do not care where the blood flows from, only that it does. Suddenly, the tension snaps, and the four men leap at one another in a whirlwind of fists and hatred. The slaughter plays out as follows. Hodgson, in brackets 0 to 10 seconds, a ride to the chin rocks De Zerbi and he falls to his knees. He has been here before. Really? Hodgson has already moved past him, setting a big Target. I told you, you can't count out Roy Hodgson. He's got that dog yeah. in him, you know? <laughs> Hodgson is running straight for Silva, who is backing up, unsure whether to strike or defend. His hesitation allows Hodgson to get under his guard and deliver a quick flurry of jabs to the body. The punches win Silva, and the Englishman runs past him too, leaving the Brazilian on his own, with nowhere to hide. Hodgson, <laughs> sensing he is now vulnerable, runs in for the kill. Silva, winded, has no time to recover. He is hit by a left to the jaw, then a right, and is floored by a left. There is no coming back from this. Then Hodgson delivers the killing blow, a powerful right hand to the temple. The Englishman, his eyes alive with joy, turns around <laughs> to see that fight is all but one. Only the Italian remains. What do you mean only the Italian remains? Who else went down? What's Gary O'Neill done here? But then Gary O'Neill and Roberto De Zerbi attack once again. They know that their best chance of survival is to stick together. No, that's not what we want. Okay, we'll see what happens. Hodgson, still on top of Silva, takes a punch from O'Neill and a kick from De Zerbi before falling to the ground. <laughs> the Italian and the Englishman are no match for a furious <laughs> Roy Hodgson. Hodgson grabs hold of Roberto De Zerbi and using his considerable weight, hard, lifts the Italian up and over him, sending De Zerbi into the stratosphere. A nearby tree? <laughs> My god, he has thrown him far. It is a knockout blow, but is one that comes at a price, as Hodgson is winded by a punch from Gary O'Neill, giving his rival a few precious moments of freedom. The Irishman runs towards a nearby log, which he uses as a battering ram, knocking Roy Hodgson to the ground and rendering him unconscious. The fight is won, but O'Neill is in trouble, as the Italian the <laughs> has just recovered and is now running towards him with murder on his mind. Roberto De Zerbi is about to throw a punch at Gary O'Neill when he is blindsided by the fallen Roy Hodgson. My god, there's so many twists to this. Gary O'Neill grabs the lock and swings it like a club, strikes the Italian on the head, killing him instantly. O'Neill then goes in search of the next victim, but it's the end of his journey as the Irishman is shot dead. But no, let's no. Right, we had what we wanted there. Just for a little bonus round, apparently Roy Hodgson finished off the round by shooting Gary O'Neill. So Marco Silva and Roberto De Zerbi are out. We got Roy Hodgson and Gary O'Neill heading over to the quarterfinals. We've lost some big ones. We've lost Pep. We've lost Sean Dyche. Uh, I'm surprised to see Postacoglu moving on to the next round, to be honest. Nah, I think he's a dark horse. I think like when he snaps, he snaps, you know? Okay, the managers have had a day off to lick their wounds after some brutal group stage action, but they're back and they're ready to do it all over again. So for this one, the managers are going to be split into groups of five. The first three to die from each group are out. Because of death. But for this round, we're going to introduce some weapons into the arena that managers can scavenge and pick up. Hang on, hang on. So there's two quarterfinals and it's 5v5. You know the reason it's called a quarterfinal is because there's four matches. Well. <laughs> But it's the round before the semi-finals, so we're gonna go with it. So group one, we've got Arteta, Cooper, Hodgson, Postacoglu, and Heckingbottom. We've got the North London Derby in group one. Pochettino, Klopp, Frank, Moyes, and O'Neill. Okay, okay. I reckon Klopp's in with a strong chance in that group. Mikel Arteta, Steve Cooper, Roy Hodgson, Ange Postacoglu, and Paul Heckingbottom circle one another, preparing for the inevitable violence that will soon follow. The five men are armed with only their bare hands and any other weapons they can find. They hate each other more than life itself, and will not stop fighting until three of the men have died, and then the slaughter begins. Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta <laughs> is first to the draw, using his experience in the Spanish La Liga in English Premier League. Right, AI is just flexing here. To his advantage, he picks up a heavy metal fight. 
<laughs> Not the ball! Swinging it into the face of Roy Hodgington. That'll be Roy Hodgson, former Crystal Palace boss and Liverpool legend. With all the strength of a thousand subs. <laughs> Hodgson's face is smashed open by the ferocity of Arteta's swing. But before the Arsenal boss can finish the job, the former England skipper is saved by the quick reactions of Paul Heckingbottom. The 49-year-old man from Doncaster picks up a freaking <laughs> that Arteta ducks just in the nick of time. Arteta's attention is drawn away from Hodgson, allowing the broken and bloody liver buddly in to pick himself up. I love how I've just said any weapon they can think of and they've gone with a pole and a brick. Hodgson grabs a long stick from the floor, stabbing it through the side of Arteta's eye. As Arteta wails in pain, Ange Postacoglu takes advantage. The Greek-Australian grabs the metal pole, ripping it from the Spaniard's socket. With one swing, the Brisbane roar and now Leicester City manager knocks Arteta's head clean off his shoulders. Oh my god. Oh no. Trust the process. As the Spaniard's blood and spinal fluid paints the room, the four remaining men pause, trying to catch their breath. They all look at each other, wondering who will be next to fall. As Arteta's <laughs> severed head rolls around the room, it is Hodgson who finds his bearings first. He picks up a brick, another one, and hurls it at the face of Steve Cooper, hitting the Swansea and Wales boss directly between the eyes. Blood pours from the gash in Cooper's forehead, causing the Welshman to stumble backwards. Hodgson sees his opportunity, picking up the metal pole and thrusting it straight into Cooper's oh, neck. Oh no, this isn't going well for Steve. The Swansea and Wales boss tries desperately to remove the pole from his windpipe, but he is already too far gone. The Liverpool legend falls to the floor, <laughs> taking his last breath. So Steve Cooper, is, is he a Liverpool legend? He moved to Liverpool in 2008 and was appointed manager of their academy, so clearly did a great job. With two men already dead, Postacoglu and Heckingbottom take another break to catch their breath and plan the next move. They both know the only way out is through killing the other man, and that is something they are not looking forward to. The two men make eye contact and nod at each other, knowing what needs to be done. As they approach each other, ready to fight, a third figure appears in the doorway. It's none other than former <laughs> West Ham and Wales boss Howard Wilkinson, who is carrying a gun. What? Oh my god, a world card! What is Howard Wilkinson suddenly carrying out a drive-by? The 76-year-old points the pistol directly at Postacoglu, pulling the trigger. Nothing happens. Oh my the gun God. is jammed, taking the opportunity. Pecking bottom charges at Postacoglu. He throws a punch, landing the blow square on the Greek Australian's jaw. The force is so strong, Postacoglu's teeth fly straight out of his mouth. He looks at him and goes, Not cool, mate. Postacoglu <laughs> stumbles backwards, falling directly onto Arteta's <laughs> severed head. I've got to get out of here! The Leicester manager <laughs> screams. The Brisbane roar and Leicester City boss picks up the metal pole, thrusting him into Hecking Bottom's stomach. The former Barnsley boss falls to the floor. Floor, clutching his wound as blood spills out. Seeing the opportunity, Postacoglu uses the metal pole once again, this time aiming for the top of Heckingbottom's skull. It connects with the 52-year-old Yorkshireman, instantly killing him. What about? That is probably who I'd have predicted Postacoglu and Hodgson, to, sorry, uh, Hodgington to get through. Mauricio Pochettino, Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Frank, David Moyes and Gary O'Neill look set to pounce upon one another at the slightest provocation. They have sworn to kill one another in a brutal fight to the death, and only two men can emerge from the carnage alive. Weapons are scattered all over the arena, but who will reach what first? The five men eagerly await the oncoming massacre, and suddenly, it begins. Mauricio Pochettino rushes over to where the swords are scattered. He grabs a broadsword, but before he can take another breath, David Moyes snatches a sword up too, and the pair begin clashing their huge <laughs> throbbing shafts together. Gary O'Neill and Thomas Frank scramble for a spear. Gary O'Neill gets his hands on it, and before Thomas Frank can wrestle it from his grip, he stabs it through his opponent's neck, and blood erupts from his throat as his lifeless body tumbles to the ground. Oh my god, that was quick. Jürgen <laughs> Klopp races for the crossbows, and just as he's about to reach one, an arrow zips past him, nearly grazing his arm. Jürgen looks up and sees that David Moyes has already taken his own bow, and has nearly shot a second arrow at him. Jürgen leaps for a crossbow, picks it up, and quickly aims it at David Moyes, who is aiming his own crossbow at Jürgen. Both men pull their triggers simultaneously, and the arrows <laughs> fly directly towards one another. The two missiles meet midair and explode. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mauricio Pochettino is now locked in an intense duel with Gary O'Neill, slashing at each other with their swords. As they fight, David Moyes tries shooting a third arrow at Jürgen, but this time, Jürgen is able to get his crossbow up and shoots an arrow of his own, and the two arrows collide as well. Why are these two the fucking reincarnations of Robin Hood? Jürgen Klopp, realising his weapon is no longer any use. <laughs> that happens when you reach the age of 50. Drops his crossbow and grabs a mace. He starts swinging it at David Moyes. David manages to evade every blow. And finally, in a last-ditch effort, 
Jurgen Klopp throws the mace directly at David's head. He scores through the head. And in an instant, the mace bashes into David Moyes' face, cracking open his skull, sending blood splattering everywhere. This is just the fucking Turrican intro. <laughs> David falls to the ground, dead. The three remaining men now turn their attention back to one another. Mauricio Pochettino goes after Jürgen, and Gary O'Neill goes after Mauricio. Jürgen and Mauricio clash their swords together. Mauricio knocks the sword out of Jürgen's hands, but before he can attack him again, Gary O'Neill grabs the broadsword, and now the two men are fighting for possession of it. Gary O'Neill eventually wins the battle and slashes Mauricio Pochettino's throat, ending him. Oh my goodness. Gary O'Neill is absolutely flying. No one saw this coming. With that, Gary O'Neill and Jurgen Klopp have made it through to the semi-finals. That's actually a pretty tasty semi-final. We got Postacoglu, yeah. Hodgson, Klopp and Gary O'Neill. Gary O'Neill just looks so out of place, doesn't he? So, the semi-finals will be... Hodgson against Klopp. I was kind of hoping for that in the final. Yeah, that's like Bayern against City. So the semi-finals are prepared. We've got Klopp versus Hodgson and O'Neill versus Postacoglu. But this time, our managers do not stand alone. For the semi-finals, our managers will be backed up by their team mascot. <laughs> so we're gonna have Klopp and Mighty Red versus Hodgson and Pete the Eagle. And we got Gary O'Neill and Wolfie versus Postacoglu and Chirpy Cockrell. I'm so sad Arteta and Gunnosaurus didn't make it through. Oh, that would have been such a matchup. Let's get underway, shall we? Roy Hodgson and his loyal ally, Pete the Eagle, stand just meters apart from Jurgen Klopp and his faithful companion, Mighty Red. The crowd call for blood, and the four men are all too happy to provide. They all start empty handed, but a pile of close combat weapons lie in the center of the arena. Which team will reach it first? The four fighters know that this can only end when one of the teams has killed the other, and then the slaughter begins. Hodgson is a coward and a liar, his only friend the eagle. He runs towards the weapons, knowing that only a gun can keep his enemy back. The crowd roars, kill him! Klopp has more honor than any other man. <laughs> it's this AI, Scouse. He charges, a mighty battle cry escaping his throat. The crowd call, get him! The mighty German dashes across the arena floor. His feet are heavy, as if they're made of lead. He runs. He runs like the wind. Okay, two very different um, Hodgson is faster, the weapons are his, and his hands stretch out to seize a deadly weapon. Klopp is seconds too late, the coward has a gun, and is about to shoot him in the back. He turns, he turns around, and in an instant he throws a knife. It soars through the air, a deadly missile, and plunges into Hodgson's chest. The coward has been stopped, the eagle cries out, Jürgen! Mighty Red has a knife, a dagger of his ancestors. Okay. He raises his mighty hand, and in one fatal blow, stabs the eagle in the heart. The eagle falls. A scream of agony echoing from his throat. He has served his master faithfully, but his work is now done. Wow, that was efficient. They have just dispatched Hodgson and beat the eagle. Okay, so that was the quickest round yet. Jurgen Klopp has made it through to the finals. Gary O'Neill and his faithful companion Wolfie face off against Ange Postacoglu and his steadfast ally Chirpy Cockrell. The four men impatiently waiting for the bloodshed to begin. They know this fight can only finish when one of the teams has killed the other, and the tension is close to breaking point. The warriors start empty handed, but an assortment of melee weapons lie in the middle of the arena. The four men then charge at each other, and the long and epic death match goes as follows. Wolfie takes down Chirpy with his signature move, a headlock that cuts off the oxygen to the brain and causes instant loss of consciousness. The crowd goes wild. Ange runs up to Gary and demands he hand over Wolfie for a trade. He is good at negotiating. Gary refuses. The two men then get into a fist fight, and Ange manages to knock out Gary with his powerful left hook. Ange and Wolfie then escape from the arena, but they are chased by Gary, who has somehow come back to life. I think it's gonna come down to like Wolfie with a gun having to choose who to shoot. <laughs> they manage to evade Gary and flee the scene. Ange and Wolfie then take on new names and live new lives as a couple of nonsense. Citizens with a pass comes back to Auburn. Wolfie is killed by a stray bullet while defending his new friend, and Gary is executed in front of Ange's <laughs> eyes. The two men are buried next to each other in a cemetery, and the moving tribute is held in their honor. What? Who executed Gary? That was very vague about that, wasn't it? Chirpy Cockrell's still just somewhere out there. No one bothered coming to get him. Ange versus Jurgen for the fight. Wow. Oh my god. What goodness. a matchup. This is a chance for Klopp to get his revenge. Let's see if the is going to intervene on this one. So on to the final between Postacoglu and Klopp. For this one, it's just going to be a straight 1v1. Both men are going to be armed with a sword and a shield though, just to keep things close combat but even. May the best man win. And just for our imagination, they are fighting in rust. 
As the unending torrent of rain came crashing down upon the earth, the two fighters locked eyes with one another, a mixture of fear, anticipation and malice filling them both. Jürgen Klopp and Ange Postacoglu had killed countless others along their long and gruelling journey and it was finally time for the two warriors to face one another in a brutal fight to the death. Both men are armed with a sword and a shield and with a blood curdling battle cry the two men charge at one another beginning a long and epic battle that will only end when one of the men has been slain. After a brief but exhilarating clash of steel both men step back circling around each other as they wait for their opponent to make a move. After a few moments Klopp lunges forward striking his blade at his opponent's head, but Postacoglu is too quick, parrying the sword and riposting. The two men trade blows for a couple of minutes, neither man able to gain the upper hand over the other, but it is clear from their movements that Postacoglu is the slightly superior swordsman. His attacks are more precise and well-timed, whilst Klopp seems to be tiring slightly. Wow. Eventually, after a particularly powerful attack, Postacoglu is able to knock his opponent's blade from his hands, the sword flying across the sodden battlefield and landing some distance away. Unarmed and seemingly outmatched, Klopp raises his shield and braces him himself for an attack, but Postacoglu hesitates slightly before raising his sword, allowing his opponent to charge at him. With a sudden burst of speed, Klopp rushes at Postacoglu, using his shield to force the sword away and barge into him, knocking him off balance and causing him to drop his weapon. With both men now disarmed, Klopp seizes the opportunity and quickly picks up his opponent's discarded blade, turning to face him with a sinister smile on his face. However, instead of rushing him or going on the attack, Klopp simply tosses the sword aside, watching as it lands in the mud some distance away and slowly backs away from his confused opponent. I don't know why you've been doing this, why you've been killing so many of us. It's all just part of your master plan, isn't it? What are you talking about? My master plan? I've been fighting and killing for as long as I can remember. All because the people of the Empire are nothing but cowards. <laughs> if they're not going to stand up for themselves, then I'll gladly do it for them. And how is murdering thousands and thousands of innocents going to help your cause? How is murdering them innocent? We don't want any part of your war. We don't even have an army. You're a monster. I am a soldier, and I will do whatever is necessary to achieve my goal. And what goal is that? You're gonna kill everyone who doesn't fit into your little utopia. I'm gonna kill everyone who's too weak to fight. I'm gonna kill everyone who doesn't deserve to live. That's not how the world works. You can't just decide who deserves to live or die. That's exactly how the world works. And it's my job to make sure it happens. You're insane. I'm a soldier. A monster. An assassin. A murderer. A fighter. A monster. An <laughs> idealist. The sexual tension is outrageous here. If they start vigorously making out, then that's that. Like, we call the final a draw. A murderer. Enough of this. Fight me like a man or get the hell out of my sight. Klopp and Postacoglu continued to trade verbal blows for some time. Neither man willing to give an inch to the other. Eventually, Klopp decides that he's had enough and begins to walk away from the fight, not wanting to engage his opponent any longer. However, Postacoglu is furious at this blatant disrespect and grabs hold of Klopp's shoulder, spinning him around and shoving him back, causing him to slip in the wet mud and fall backwards, landing hard on his backside. Hey, get the hell back here. I'm not finished with you yet. Go to hell. Why are you running? Too scared? to fight a real man. Shut up! Come on, fight me like a man. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. Then prove it. Come on, fight me. No, coward. Shut up. Fight me, you son of a bitch. No, you fucking coward. Fight me. I won't, you fucking pussy. Fight me, you worthless piece of shit. Stop it. You're pathetic. I can't believe you're afraid to fight me. You're a fucking disgrace to humanity. Stop it. <laughs> you're a joke. You're nothing but a fucking joke. Stop it. Coward. Klopp can no longer control his emotions <laughs> and lets out a primal scream of rage and pain. His hands clenching into fists and his body shaking with anger. He gets to his feet and charges at his opponent. A look of pure hatred and fury in his eyes. And Postacoglu is taken aback by the sudden surge of emotion from his adversary. The two men lock in combat once again and their duel rages on. But Klopp is consumed by a burning desire for vengeance and is unable to keep a cool head. The two men continue to exchange blows for several minutes and both are now beginning to tire. Eventually, Postacoglu gains the upper hand and is able to land a devastating punch on his opponent's jaw, sending him sprawling to the ground. With Klopp down, Postacoglu wastes no time in grabbing hold of him and flipping him over onto his front, pinning him face down in the mud. This is where you belong, on your knees and in the dirt. You're a pathetic excuse for a man. Go to hell. This is the end, Jürgen. Time for you to die. With that, Postacoglu raises his foot and brings it down hard onto Klopp's head. The sole of the boot crushing the skull of the once great man. A sickening crunch fills the air and Postacoglu stands there, panting and grinning triumphantly as the life leaves his opponent's body. The battle is over and Ange Postacoglu has proven that he is truly the greatest warrior the Empire has ever known. <laughs> wow.
What a battle. What a finale. That was such a showdown. The emotion, the drama, the conclusion. I actually got so invested They had in everything that. there. I can't believe it. Ange Posikoglu, everyone's saying what a lovely bloke he is, but clearly you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Beating Klopp in the final is fucking something. <laughs> this time he didn't need a dodgy VAR call to do it. Yeah, and there we have it. That's the answer to the age-old question of which Premier League manager would win in a fight. I would absolutely love to do this for something else. People should let us know in the comments what other battle or what other kind of format you'd like to see in another one of these. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Doug. Doug, I fully nabbed this concept from his video where he did the same thing with video game characters. Please go and watch that if you haven't already. It's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you again so much for joining me, Christoph. It's it's been a journey. Honestly, this is the most fun I've had making a video like ever, I think. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you later.